Well, hello there again. This is Dr. Miner. Welcome to my video series, Do You Want to Heal Fast or Slow? Today we're going to talk about exercise and why it works, how it works. So just give you some basic exercises to do so that when you get hurt, you can recover as fast as you can. So why exercise? Well, first off, let me give you this quote. I've heard this many times. If the benefits of exercise were available in a pill, every doctor would, would prescribe it and every patient would take it. The benefits are so great that we get from exercise that it's, it's incredible. We, there's nothing else you can do to get those benefits. Now, if you add up the benefits of proper diet and hydration and get, taking the right pills and the other things we're going to talk about, then they, they really help as well. But if you take, leave out exercise or at least just movement, you've lost a lot. So here's what happens when we exercise. The circulation gets increased. So you, you're pushing out the old stuff and you're bringing in new fresh blood, you know, in with the new and out with the old. You're getting rid of the waste products, the lactic acids, the, the, uh, <clears throat> the white blood cells that have been um, accumulating and eating up all the, all the uh, dead uh, cells, the debris in there, and they need to be moved out so they can get into the liver and the spleen and get recircle, recirculated, recycled, so, they can, uh, be, so the body can make new ones, so you can get going and bring the new stuff in. And if, it's all, if the area you've injured is all crowded up with the, the pus and the white blood cells and all the swelling and all, then you're not going to be able to bring in the new stuff to push that out. Anyway, it speeds up the healing by doing that. Next is you organize the scar tissue. It organizes scars. So that gives you better joint motion and less re-injury. So it's pretty obvious. I mean, well, we talked about the how joints heal, how the tendons heal, how the muscles heal, the ligaments. They need a little bit of a tension in order to organize the to tell the scar tissue which way to go. Otherwise, it'll just be all over the place. It'll be cross-linked in there, and you have these big knots in there. So the more, the earlier, in fact, of an injury that you start getting some gentle motion in there, a little bit of tension on those muscles, not enough to re-tear them, but nice, easy tension, then it organizes those, and everything gets better faster. And not only is it short-term benefit, but it's long-term benefit because the joint will be more normal, and that's what we want. Um, you'll get less muscle atrophy. And when the muscles are working, um, atrophy means the muscles shrink. I hope you understand that. But So you want to keep your muscle mass. You don't want to lose muscle mass when you get injured. And you will if you don't exercise. And you get less spasms because the muscles get used to working and they're pumping the fluid out of there, makes them less irritated. So you'll have less spasm, less cramping in there. So probably the most important thing, well, they're all important, but it activates the brain-body connection. You know, about 80% of all the input to the brain, all the sensory input to the brain, comes from these what are called mechanoreceptors and nociceptors and chemoreceptors, all through every joint, every muscle, every tendon, every part of our connective tissue and muscle mass and bones and everything to the brain to tell it where it is, what it has to do, what then the brain can know how to respond to it and set that up. It's really key to making sure everything works right. Um, I, I'll tell you a story. Um, a friend of mine, when I was a sophomore in high school, broke his arm on the wrestling team. Our wrestling coach was a big TV wrestler, former pro football player, Art Boom Boom Mahalik. And uh, we really appreciated that guy. He was a great role model for us in a lot of ways. Just Anyway, he talked my friend into going out for wrestling. I, I resigned. I didn't want to wrestle. And he broke his arm on the second day. So here it is. Six weeks later, he gets his cast off. And now I'm in charge of helping him rehabilitate it. So we had to go swimming and do exercises and stuff. He needed someone to be in the pool with him. And, well, I volunteered. Anyway, old Dale, we were wrestling around one day. And I, he was the strongest guy. And he had me down. So I put my foot in his chest and grabbed his arm. and went like this to push him off. And, and it, his arm, you have to understand, he only had this much motion after he got his cast off because the scar tissue had bound up that joint. And I must have ripped, you know, half of that off. So he now had about 75% more range of motion. It hurt. It swelled up for a couple of days. And, but we kept working it and working it and working it. We didn't know better, but we did the right thing. And he actually got better. 
So my point is, you, you or someone you know has broken their arm, and they've got that arm in a cast, and it can't move. And that's what happens is it scars up in there. The reason it can't move is the scars just go all over the place in there. They don't have the tension to tell it where to go. The brain's not getting signals to input it to tell it where to go. And so it gets locked up, and you have to gradually work it and gradually work it until you get it back. Um, that's what happens. Now, there's another interesting study I read once, by the way, where there's a lot of people break their arms, so they have a huge group of people to do studies on. Well, they had you know, one with a couple thousand people in it, and when they broke their left arm, or whichever arm they broke, they exercised the other one, doing you know, dumbbells or whatever they did. Um, they exercised the good arm. And the, and the other group of people did not exercise the good arm. Well, here's what happened. The people that exercised had less atrophy in the muscle or in the muscles of the side that was injured. So it's kind of a weird thing. You know, they always say that the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. That's only partially true. 80% of the nerves to the left side of the body are on this side of your brain, but 20% are on this side and go to the same side, and 20% for this side come down here. So you're activating those nerves. That's how important that brain-body connection is. It can even have a trophic or a growth um, response, even if you're not using that arm, just because that 20% side will increase that. So it's really important to move, and when it's not in the cast and you move it and you always work the other arm, it's, it's a really big deal. So what do we need to be in shape? I wanted to bring this up because <clears throat> you'll see what we can gain and lose by not exercising. You need strength, flexibility, you need balance, and you need endurance. And that's what you need to be in shape. Most people have plenty of strength, no flexibility. Uh, they're out of balance, one side stronger than the other. They can't stand on one foot, and they have no endurance. That's just the way we are. Um, so when you lose strength, atrophy is what happens. You lose your muscle mass. And if you can exercise a little bit just to keep that atrophy down, you'll keep your strength. Flexibility is we lose because we can't move a joint. Like if I'm always talking about the arm because it's easier to demonstrate than the spine. The spine is way more complicated, compl more complex than the than an elbow joint or something. But the principles are the same. When you when you get an injury, you get spasm. The joints get tight, and you lose that flexibility. And you've got to try to get that back. And balance is not just standing on one foot, being able to do that. It really talks about faulty joint motion from one side of the joint to the other and from one side of the body to the other. Those are really important balance uh, concepts that we need to keep in mind to keep that. So we need to be moving to keep our balance. And then endurance. Inactivity leads to a lack of endurance. You don't want to lose that endurance. You can lose your, your endurance. You can lose 50% of it in a week of bed rest. That's huge. So if you just can get up and move a little bit, even just a little bit every hour, um, you'll find that you'll be able to, to do that. So now we want to talk a little bit about how. We're going to do half of this today, I think, and half in another video. So <clears throat> the idea of what we're going to do here is we're going to look at a range of motion, trying to get that back. We're talking about flexibility because we want to get the joint motion back, so we need more flexibility, and we want to get balance from side to side. And when you do any of those, you're also going to be building some strength up in there, and by doing it, you're getting endurance. So any, motion, any exercise that you do, you're actually working on strength, flexibility, balance, and endurance. You're, you're working on all of those. So we'll keep that in mind. So the two common mistakes that we make is we do too little movement or we do too much movement. I, I can work through this. I can keep going, you know. And what happens when you do too much is you re-injure things. You get more scar tissue, more inflammation, and it develops arthritis in the joints. So too much Exercise is not a healthy thing. And then too little movement, you get adhesions. Like you said, if you're in a cast, you're going to get adhesions in there. Same thing, if you hurt your back and you don't move it, you're going to get adhesions where those joints will not work properly. So you get a disorganized scar tissue. Your joints move wrong, gives you more re-injury, and you end up with arthritis. So what you have to find is that Goldilocks, remember Goldilocks and the three bears, and the porridge was just right you got to find that just right movement. And so the way we start doing that is just by finding your functional range of motion in the injured joint. 
Now, if I injure my left shoulder and it hurts to do this, that's my functional range right here. My right shoulder, I can do this. I have no problem doing that. I could be a referee, except I couldn't, nobody could score a touchdown. I have to go like this. So that's the idea is you want to find your functional range of motion. So we use what we call motion exploration. We want to explore our range of motion so we can find out what you've got left and then build on that. So I like this concept of green light, yellow light, red light. Now, my daddy taught me to never go in the red light district because nothing good ever happens there. So you get the idea. The idea is green light is where you can move with no pain. A yellow light is when you start to get some tension, a little pulling, and you know if you go a little bit farther, then you're going to get some pain, and that would be the red light. So that's the concept we're looking for here. We want to move all of our joints in a pain-free range. And I mean even our feet, our toes, and everything, because everything needs to move, not just the injured joint. We want to move it all. Most important thing here with this whole range of motion exploration is to take only what your body gives you. You don't need to force it. The concept of no pain, no gain. Oh, I can do this, boy, gosh, I can go. Ah! And you're just tearing those joints, tearing the, the tendons, tearing ligaments, you're tearing things. Well, we don't want that. That's not what we want. So you want to move your head. Your head, if you think about it, we'll look at our spine right now. Um, you move your head this way. It goes, this is called lateral flexion. It goes side to side. It rotates side to side. And it does flexion and extension as you nod your head. And those are the ranges of motion. Now, I get a lot of people, they're able to turn like this really well. And then they go, oh, 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 I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And it hurts. Well, so what I want for the patient like that, for the person who injures their neck, and they just, all I want you to do is just move your it goes this way, no problem. Green light, green light, yellow light. Red, uh, so I'm not going to go there. So I'm going to move in that green light zone. And then to the left, I can only go this far. So I'm taking what my body gives me. And I'm moving this way and this way. And I'm going to do this five to ten times. And I'm going to do this every hour. I'm going to do something every hour to get my blood circulating. Because I want to heal as fast as I can. Now the same thing, I'm going to go, oh, it hurts this way but I can go this way. So I go a little bit here and a lot here, a little bit here, a lot there, a little bit here, a lot there. And I'll do that 10 times. And then I'll do flexion and extension, nodding my head like this. Just take what your body gives you. That's all you want to do. Now in the low back, what you want to do is you want to avoid one thing. You want to be doing lateral flexion. And I do that by running my hand. I don't know if you can see this. I run my hand right down the side of my leg towards my knee so I'm not going forwards like this. I'm doing lateral flexion here, and then I do rotation. And I'll, I, I kind of point my fingers so I can see where I'm going. So say I, I'm going this far this way, but it hurts right here. So I can do this, and I just go to here. That's all I can, I'm taking what my body gives me, and it works. And then pretty soon what happens is, I'm, that's, hence the pointing the fingers. I do this. Pretty soon, it goes like another inch farther every time I go. And the speed, you don't, you're not trying to whip it around, but you don't have to go super slow either. Just go to normal, what feels comfortable for you, what feels safe, because you want to stay safe with this. But pretty soon, the things are going to loosen up, and I'm going to get more range of motion in there. That's why we do this, so we can increase and increase. Because we want to find out what we've got left and we want to build on it. We want to build up whatever range of motion we have. Now, the thing we want to avoid in the back, as I was going to say, is this is how we get hurt in our low back a lot. It's a lot of bending and lifting. So we don't do that one. We don't do, in your low back, you don't want to go forwards and backwards. Unless you're going to lean against the wall and kind of push back like this, then that would be fine just to get a little bit of extension but again, it's got to be in that green light zone. You can't go into even yellow or red because you're going to hurt yourself. That's how we hurt our backs. So that's what we're trying to do here. We want to be in shape. We want to, we want to build our strength, our flexibility, our balance, and our endurance. And we do that starting. The initial thing that we do is just this range of motion exploration. And it'll grow. And... Uh, that will build up 
it increases circulation, it'll organize the scar tissue, it will decrease our atrophy, and it'll help break up spasms, and it activates the brain-body connection, so our brain gets activated, and it's amazing what that'll do for you. So, green light, yellow light, red light. All right, next time we come back, we're gonna talk about how to strengthen the body. And again, we're giving you the basic exercises. We're not giving you a comprehensive physical therapy um, course or anything like that. We want you to be able to heal as quickly as you can at home. Something you can do, and these are things you can do as soon as you get injured, you can do this. The timing on this, that's what I wanted to cover. How often do you do this? Every hour, do something whether it's doing the whole exercise thing or just doing one. But every hour you want to do something. And every exercise you do helps. So even walking will help. If you just get up and walk up and down your hallway or take a walk around your block or halfway down the block so you can walk halfway back, those are the things you want to do. You want to get that circulation going. So it's really important when, as soon as you get injured to start moving it. And that's We'll get into ice and heat in a little bit, too. We'll teach you how to use that for these issues, too. Okay? All right. Next time, we'll be back with how to strengthen those muscles a little bit. All right. And the joints. Thanks. Bye now.